All right. Hey, man, thanks for doing this today. Yeah, happy to be here. Um, well, uh, look, man, I just wanted to, so really just to talk to you about hospitality and what you love about it and how you got into it and, um, you know, what's going on these days. I mean, you're at Avery Brewing, which has clearly been a massively successful business, has a great reputation. Um, it's done really well out there in Colorado. And, and, uh, I know you've got it, well, you've got a huge market that y'all serve, but, uh, sounds like a cool business to be a part of. Um, but what, what got you started initially in hospitality? Um, well, I've kind of been in and out of restaurants my, my whole life, uh, smaller ones, but uh, then kind of made the decision to make uh, a bigger commitment in hospitality when I, uh, I graduated from college. I went to music school in Boston, and uh, I'm originally born and raised in Boulder, and uh, at first didn't really know why I came back to Boulder. I had a good thing going in Boston, but love Colorado. Um, close with my parents. They live close by, and uh I think there's a lot of uh, correlation in between being a musician and being a performer and also being engaged in hospitality, whether it's uh, kind of the performance aspect of when you're on the floor entertaining guests, working collaboratively with a team, uh, everything along those lines and going to uh, just the community aspect of it, the kind of gathering place, the meeting place that uh, people can come to, your hometown can come to. Uh, I love a saying that I heard from uh, an Englishman that said, uh, you know, when somebody dies, we go to the pub. When somebody gets married, we go to the pub. And uh, living in Boulder as well, I've kind of expanded that saying to uh, when you get evacuated from a hundred year flood, you go to the pub. When you get evacuated from forest fires that burn down your town, you go to the pub. And it's a really powerful uh, meeting place that as well can accommodate things like shows and music and a lot of the first shows that I put on after graduating with my band were at my local pub uh, and a bunch of them around the area so that's kind of how I got into it I suppose. That's cool man so what so what what instrument do you, or instruments do you play? Uh, I went to school for guitar and voice and I play a lot of piano as well uh, kind of went for a composition, arranging, and production major, and uh, ended up playing in a band all around Colorado and the Western States for three, four, five years, and recorded a few albums with them, and uh, we're no longer together, but uh, it, was a, it was a fun period, for sure, and can't thank all of the establishments enough. Uh, you know, when you're first getting going, you're not necessarily playing real venues that uh ticketed venues you're playing bars and restaurants and and pubs and it's a it's a good way to you know connect with your your hometown and your community as well so what um what what, what was the name of your band uh 60 minute men and what kind of music did y'all play it was like funk soul rock and roll nice stuff like that yeah who were like who are your influences who do you who... well I love uh, R&B music. I think my favorite artist of all time is probably D'Angelo. Uh, okay. So I, I love that kind of R&B soul, uh, as well as a lot of kind of more contemporary funk artists like uh, Lettuce, Soul Live, um, Wolfpack, uh, and then uh, uh, Anderson Pac, uh, things like that. Really groovy, funky, soulful stuff. That sounds fun, man. It was. It was very fun. So yeah. you you were in Boston. How long were you there? Uh, four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. And then you came back. And um, how long have you been back in Boulder? I've been back in Boulder over ten years now. Okay. Yeah. How um, long have you been at Avery? I've been at Avery six and a half years, um, and I was uh, just next month. I think March thirteenth or fourteenth will be my uh, ten year anniversary of working for another uh company in town uh, i don't know if you've ever heard of the mountain sun or southern sun pubs um they i like to think of them more as a restaurant that has a brewery whereas avery is a brewery that has a restaurant uh, mm -hmm. the the mountain sun pubs make excellent beer but they don't uh they don't distribute at all they just distribute to their 
I see they, they have five pubs now all around the Denver Boulder area. Um, and yeah, make great food, great, uh, great beer. And I was with them for three and a half years and had a bunch of friends, uh, whether it was front of house or in production, move over to Avery. And just uh, they were building their new facility at the time. Uh, they used to be in Avery used to be in one little warehouse and over the years kind of acquired more and more of these warehouses, but they were uh, very disconnected. There was like a property management place and a catering company and a tree an arborist company in between all their buildings. So they built this um, amazing new facility from the ground up. And that's when I moved over to, to Avery and uh, been there ever since. Um, how long has Avery been around? It's been like a few decades around. Now, it's, right? I think this year in August will be 29 years. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Since, uh, since COVID started, we used to do a big anniversary invitational party uh, and invited a ton of breweries from around the country to come and pour. And it was a ticketed event at the brewery and haven't done those in a few years. So I lost track of how long Avery's been around, but. It's a, uh, I'm, I met, um, oh gosh, I'm drawing. Is it Adam? Adam Avery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three years ago, right before COVID, I was out there in Boulder. I was staying at uh, Dave Query's house. And oh, nice. uh, he had some of our customers over, including Adam. He was a really cool dude. I really enjoyed uh, hanging out with him. Um, but she, I mean, it's amazing that, you know, when when those guys started Avery, I mean, that's 30 years ago. That was a I had to have been a huge risk. I mean, there were just were not a lot of, you know, it wasn't like now you kind of hear of new breweries and it's, you know, they're just not that it's easy. It's, it's super challenging uh, as always, but it's just a, a model that has worked itself out and proven itself over a long time. But I, I, I mean, those guys really must've been, uh, that was a, a big deal to do that 30 years ago. Definitely. Yeah. I, uh, one of my favorite parts of my job is giving tours I really hope we can start doing those again. But uh, the kind of opening spiel that I have for my tour is uh, Adam uh, had just graduated from his undergrad and he was just a kind of Colorado boy. I loved cycling, loved rock climbing and was thinking about going to grad school, was thinking about going to law school. And uh, instead, some lawyer friends of his told him not to. And he convinced his dad, Larry, to uh, invest his entire retirement fund into helping Adam start the brewing oh. company and uh thankfully yeah thankfully it worked out uh the industry has just gone under so many changes over the last 30 years but uh yeah i think it's part of those original crew like i can't remember his name but the um uh, the founder of sierra nevada uh brewing company where these these guys were just home brewing in their garage and started to make a career of it and here we are 30 years later and it's a multi-billion dollar craft industry at this point so it's it's definitely wild how it all shaped out sierra nevada is uh, i'm here in north carolina they, and i have not been yet but they've got a apparently just an incredible uh facility up in Asheville. yeah um, i would love to make it out there yeah man you would dig Asheville for sure there's a lot of good good beer up there and good people um it's a lot Asheville's actually a lot like a it's like somebody took a town from out and you know out west in the mountains in the Rockies and just plopped it into North Carolina and uh, it's a cool place. Well, so tell us about Avery. How, like how how many like where where's your territory now? Where's your footprint? Are you guys distributing all over the country or is it mainly out west or? Yeah, um, we definitely consolidated a little bit in the last couple of years. Uh, Pre-COVID, we had a very large footprint uh, nationally and even globally. Um, we were distributing into Japan and Norway for some international markets. And then uh, we were everywhere, I think, from the Northeast. Uh, we decided to expand into Manhattan and Pennsylvania and uh, kind of consolidated that back and decided to focus more on our home state of Colorado and a couple of really key markets for us, one being um, Southern California, uh, San Diego area, Orange County, and another being kind of Dallas, Fort Worth area. Uh, we have a really strong presence there. And uh, yeah, trying to get uh, kind of our feet back under us in terms of all of the changing 
styles in the marketplace. Um, I, when I started there six and a half years ago, barrel aged beers were just this huge craze, huge rave. Uh, any anything from a wine barrel aged sour beer to a sixteen percent stout with espresso oh, and and chocolate and aged oh, bourbon yeah. barrels. And I think the uh, the industry and the the consumer have changed a lot. Um, and I mean, a ton of different styles have even popped up in the last six and a half years from uh, hazy IPAs. I don't think we're even a thing when I started there. Uh, seltzer has taken a huge yeah. chunk of the of the craft market as well. So trying to uh, refocus kind of in those areas as well. Um, and I, I will say one thing that I really love about working uh, for the tap room and restaurant in Avery is the amount of fanfare that we have coming through our doors every single day, even in the winter time, even in the slow time, it blows my mind how many guests we have that have never been to our brewery before. It's their first time. And I think having that nationwide kind of audience and having the quality of our product speak for itself when people come and visit the brewery it's a it's a really cool and special experience for them to kind of come home and be at the at the mothership so to speak oh for sure absolutely um well so it's interesting because you talked about you know the similarities between being in a band and being a musician and the hospitality aspect of, of what you do at, at you know there in the restaurant and pub and I find that to be it really is interesting and you hear a lot of people that say that you know every day is different which is cool like if you're uh, you know it would be the same thing if you're running around doing concerts and stuff it's different challenges every day but the end goal whether you're a musician or whether you're at a restaurant or you're in hospitality I think that the overriding principle is, is making people smile, right? Like that's what people like you do. I mean, it's whether it's through playing a guitar and being on a stage and singing or whether it's, you know, having people inviting them into your, you know, your home, so to speak, and, and providing good service and, and good food and good beer. It's just, there's something about making people smile and making people happy that I, I find to be this really interesting common thread as we we're doing this series about, you know, people that have chosen to make hospitality a career. It, it is a very, very clear thread that that's what, you know, everybody I've spoken to so far really uh, finds happiness and fulfillment in just making other people smile and happy. Absolutely. Um... I think one other metaphor I have for that, uh, one of my old bosses, uh, excellent hospitalitarian, but uh, he had this saying that every day is an audition. And uh, when you're trying to build a community hub for people to come and whether it's to relax or celebrate, even one sour experience can kind of turn a guest away from a particular establishment. And uh, I, lo I love that saying that every day is an audition. Every time you come into work, you have an opportunity to make a contagious loyalist, make a, a regular for life. Um, and it's all about what you can do inside of your performance because you know, a lot of people can go, especially in Boulder, you can find Avery beer on tap, 100, 200 different places around the area. You can get an excellent meal all over town, uh, especially Denver, Boulder. There's a really amazing culinary community here. But yes. uh, I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to the vibe, the experience that you have there. And are you celebrating? Are you relaxing? Are you just coming in to have a pint, sitting alone at the bar? Um, it's up to us as proprietors and staff to create and cultivate that experience. And yeah, every day is an audition. So just coming in refreshed and having that attitude after 10 years of being in the industry, you can get a little sidetracked sometime, but always just kind of bringing it back. And and like you said, that's that's the whole reason. That's the whole point that we're in this, I think, is that experience for our, for our fellow humans and our community. Well, 10 years in, um, even in just 10 years, a lot's changed. Um, 
and, you know, and a lot of that was accelerated, certainly the last couple of years by COVID, but what we're talking about and what everything that you just referenced all hinges on people. I mean, food's got to be good. The beer's got to be good, but there's a lot, like you said, I mean, you can get, you know, there's lots of good food and good beer people. And I'm so curious about how, what, what's happening with the people factor in this industry. It people left for the last couple of years. I don't know what they're doing now, but a lot of them are not coming back. Everybody's having a hard time. It seems like finding people. Um, so I'm just curious your thoughts on, you know, I mean, are, are, peop are, are people today, is it harder to find uh, people today that, that, that want to deliver that experience that you're talking about than it was a decade ago? I mean, that's, you got to have, like, you can train people and coach them, but at the end of the day, I feel like there's got to be, it's the people that really, that's what they want to do. They become trainable and coachable, but um, maybe there's, Maybe it's harder to find people these days that really get off on, you know, making other people happy. And that's what this all is. It's, it's taking the focus off of yourself and, and placing it on somebody else and making an effort and being proud of providing some experience to somebody else. Like you, you got to really enjoy that. Um, that seems to be maybe harder to come by these days to find those folks. Is that fair? Uh, it's definitely fair. Um, I feel very fortunate. Uh, to work for a place like Avery that kind of has that recognition uh, all over the country, but also in town. Um, it's a great place to work. Um, I think a really tricky part, whether it's, you know, pre or post COVID, wherever we are, um, the hospitality industry is a very transitory industry for, uh, you know, generally for young folks. I mean, I'm 35 and I'm probably the one of the oldest people uh, in our yeah. in our front of house operation um yeah it's a, but it's a it's a great place for people to come through for a couple of years whether they're in between uh, undergrad or graduate school or in a nursing program or physical therapy or anything like that um so i think even getting two or three years out of someone uh is i think a long stint in either the industry or in a, in a singular place in general. Um, I think a big part of finding good people right now is uh, definitely offering decent wages, decent benefits, um, and making sure that whoever you're hiring or whoever you're interviewing has a concrete understanding of your operation and what you're doing. It's almost like if you're going to hire a dishwasher, don't bring them in on a snowy Tuesday evening and uh, give them the expectation that that's what it's going to be like. Bring them in for a day one on a beautiful spring Saturday. And if they can handle that, they, they, they'll do all right. And that's just kind of a, a metaphor for any, any staff member, but uh, creating concrete expectations, uh, giving them reasonable benefits and compensation and uh, those are kind of the 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 hard tack of it but uh creating a culture in which people want to be there want to come to work uh whether it's the quality and the type of guests that you come in uh that come in the door and also the camaraderie and the type of people that you hire to create that culture like you said i think a really empowering thing is is training and giving your experience and knowledge to someone who is coachable trainable moldable and you can kind of i've seen after even you know six seven years at, at one company that culture is more apparent to me now than it was when i first started there because i've realized how valuable that is to uh, retain staff members and retain them where uh, to a level where they're still enjoying themselves because at the end of the day this can be a really really challenging and tough industry on your feet all day talking mm -hmm. to people in and out during a global pandemic but it can also be very enjoyable and very fun so it, it is it is all those extremes and everything in the middle and i've always just been super impressed with people that uh th thrive and are successful in hospitality because i feel like it is 
a profession that even prior to the pandemic, forget all that. I mean, all that y'all have had to adjust to with that has just been insane. But just daily, the, the daily process of like all the things you got to juggle to get it right. And it is, it's a performance and you are auditioning every day. And like, there's so many things that could go wrong in that performance. And then you, you, re, you, you go back out the next day and you do it again and then you do it again. And again, and every time there's different things that go wrong, there's equipment, there's customers or staff that you're like, okay, we got through that. Boom. Now this happened. Like, it's an amazing thing to be successful that I really believe that. And I think it's like one of those things where if you can succeed and, and, and thrive in hospitality, particularly in, you know, independent places and, you know, where you, you just, you're such an important aspect of your community um, and your reputation, that community is so important. So if you can do that, it's like, you can, you can do almost any other job because it's like barely anything where you're having to deal with the, all that stuff all the time. Indeed. Absolutely. It's, it's very challenging uh, in so many different aspects. And, you know, like I said, uh, after 10 years in the industry, and I think COVID has been a big part of this, but kind of weighing my options and and my uh, desire to be on my feet all day, every day. Um, I've, uh, I've definitely thought about what, what else can I possibly do? I've been in, I've been in restaurants for so long and then I've actually been thinking about it. I'm like, wow, there, I have a lot of applicable skills. And yeah, if you can, if you can make it during a global pandemic in hospitality, I think you can probably do a lot of other things too. So. <laughs> Totally agree, man. Totally agree. hundred percent. Well, I, I really want to, um, I, I, I'd love to, I want to visit y'all and I'm hoping that I'm going to get out back out to Boulder um, sometime this spring. I, I was there this summer and I was hoping to come by, but we had, I, I brought my whole, we're in North Carolina. I got three kids and my wife and I decided it would be a good idea to drive an RV all the way out to Boulder. All right. And uh, I, let's just say that they, <laughs> We we stayed in Boulder a few days. They they flew home, and I I I took it home myself. Uh, so that, yeah, that sounds that, that sounds, sounds challenging for sure. But you know, I but it, it's such a cool place, man. Like I did a bunch of I was uh, staying over at Dave's house, and they live like you know right where this all those hiking trails are, and yeah. I mean they're just like all these happy, healthy fit people running around Boulder. It's like, it's an amazing place to be. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. And uh, I think I can see why you were attracted. I guess my point is to come back there. In yeah. fact, my daughter is a senior in high school and we toured Boulder. Yeah, and, it's and dude, beautiful I, was like, I looked at my wife, I was like, we're, we're going to lose her. She's going to come out here. And the yeah. only reason I was, because <laughs> we were hoping she'd stay close to him and, she loved it, but the only the, the way we got lucky, I guess, if you will, uh, is because the RV trip was such a long, long drive. Her in her mind, this is way too far from home. Whereas you sure. know, it's a short flight, but yeah, man, the campus is beautiful. The people there are great. There's there's a great there's just so much going on there. So it's a really cool place, man. I can see why you just enjoy being there and why so many people want to be out there and why Avery does you know does so well out there it's a wonderful place and I love the uh, proximity to Denver as well if you want to hang out in Boulder you know we have a couple good concert venues like you said tons of outdoor space our downtown area is just so lovely but then you're just a 30 minute drive maybe less to a uh, professional sports games art museums and uh the i mean the culinary scene and the brewing scene down in denver is just absolutely amazing as well and the change that i've seen in my 35 years almost all of that spent right here boulder and denver the whole front range area has just changed so much uh over the past 30 years and i think a lot of that is tricky in terms of opening up a new business or finding a home finding real estate but uh, at the end of the day, I do think it's a positive thing, just bringing more people, more culture, more interest in this wonderful place and making it a just a, a wonderful couple of towns, areas that you can just hop between. And I always think of Boulder as, uh, I think of it as the beach because we're just smack dab right up against the flat irons. And so you can play a lot on the beach and have a ton of fun, uh, but there's even more to do just 
keep going yeah. west in I-70, that's the ocean. And you can really just the amount of snowboarding, skiing, camping, mountain biking, rafting, climbing up there is just all and all the mountain towns that got to love them. Steamboat, Crested Butte, all of those up there. It's, a, it's definitely a great, great place. Feel very lucky, very fortunate. Do you ski or snowboard? Or I both? snowboard. You snowboard? Yeah. Got yeah, it. just went up to uh, just went up to Jackson Hole a week and a half ago, and uh, it's great up there. Unfortunately, they didn't have any new snow, but uh, yeah, it just reminds me a lot of our our local steamboat Crested Butte. And don't know why I drove nine hours to to, to go ski when I got it right here, but uh, yeah, been snowboarding my entire life, and hope to pass that on one day. I. Uh... I was supposed to be going this Saturday. I'm supposed to be on a flight to Grand Tar, well, to Jackson, and we're going to go Ooh, to Grand Targhee. Uh, dude, she just on Friday night broke her wrist oh. on a snowboard up in the North Carolina mountains, which is uh, so. Anyway, oh, we're that's a we're postponing that one. But uh, uh, have you ever been out there to Targhee? Never been to Targhee, but uh, I think probably next time definitely go check it out um, it's a cool place you you dig it it's it's definitely um you know it's a little bit out there and it's not nearly as big or whatever but th that's kind of cool because then yeah, it's like absolutely. i went there years ago and there was you know it was like just all day long just ski down hop on the lift ski down hop on the lift so good place awesome um well look man i'll let you go i know you're a busy guy but i appreciate the time i appreciate yeah. the conversation i enjoyed this man and um just thank you so much for everything absolutely uh please uh, come on out to Boulder. If you're ever in the area, just uh, shoot me an email. We'll set you up at Avery. And uh, yeah, good luck with everything. Um, thank you for all of the support uh, with Sketchify and all your challenges recently. But uh, I always really appreciate any question I got this, the the quick response and uh, love your, your service for our 40 plus front of house employees. So appreciate that man thank yeah. you nice talking to you yeah come on out to boulder we appreciate the business my friend and i will when I, I am going to be coming out there so uh it's just a matter of when so i will definitely get in touch man i'd love to come hang actually sure. sounds all good right, all Thanks, right guys. see you well have a good one